Hello, Gosha here. Today I will be talking about darkness, the descent to the darker period, the descent to the darker time in the life of a highly sensitive person of INFJ or INFP or a feeling type that has that sense of something's changing, something is pulling them into darkness. And I'm recording this video specifically because the dark days are starting. And even though I wanted to prepare a series about anxiety, which is still coming up, I couldn't resist to address the times of darkness because I've learned in my past that we have to honor the periods of darkness that are happening inside of us and the ones that are corresponding outside of us. Oftentimes, these two periods kind of overlap, and I will tell you why and how we can do deal with the times of darkness. First of all, I want to say that the darker days trigger something in me that is nostalgic, something that brings up a lot of emotions. And I'm only saying this because also it brings up topics that I have to pause and pay attention to. It's been cyclical in my life and I've learned to pay attention and give space and honor and respect this time. That's why I also prioritize making this video that I didn't think to make before all the things I had planned, before the things that my ego has planned, before I started feeling that sense of descending into darkness. I'm not saying this just to tell you a story about my life, but to give you a sense of understanding what has worked for me instead of what hadn't worked for me when I was resisting the times of darkness and embracing the darkness in me. And for this reason, I want to share a little bit of that time when I was resisting darkness in my life and in me. And this is usually what we do when we push ahead and try to go ahead with our agendas. When, for example, like the external world that also can't tolerate darkness, the time that is involving the more restful period, the time of pause, the time of reflection, the time of uh, relaxation and settling into a certain state. Actually, the entire world, like our egos, which are conditioned by the external world, are spinning the wheels and trying actually to speed it up and clash with the na nature and what is asking to be done. Just notice that, you know, offices, then they don't slow down. Actually, what is happening in the offices, they just have the fluorescent lights or the LED lights and pretend like there is no darkness to kind of fool you that there is no sense of change that your body would normally listen to to indicate that you're more tired, you need more rest, you need to replenish yourself more. Actually, what happens usually is the last quarter of the year and everyone is putting the pressure on themselves and on you if you are employed to crank up and actually make this money, <laughs> right? To like make this period really successful financially in all kinds of ways that it was predicted. There is that pressure. And the same thing seems to happen in the lives of all people. And basically what happens whenever we feel a darker period arising in us, be that, you know, some sort of nostalgia, some sort of emotions that are resurfacing, something that is asking for you to look at it 
people usually tend to look away and focus on being more productive, getting their shit together. These are phrases that people use. Keeping, keeping their head down and focusing on work and just like doing all the things to ignore and deny reality that is already happening, meaning something in them is feeling and something in them is bubbling and something in the lives especially of highly sensitive people that are so in tune with the changes of season with the internal changes or changes you know in other people they know that something is asking of them to kind of give it a little bit time but like everyone is conditioned to just you know by their talk and just keep getting ahead. Most of them, they're focused on their functioning and, you know, just going ahead with a plan, just fulfilling whatever they had planned, whatever they aspire to, whether that's their ambitions or the ambitions of someone they are in commitment with and completely ignore the feeling, the sensing, whether that's the sensation of the feelings or just sensing that you need more time, that you need to wind down, that you don't feel like doing anything. And denying this actually is what makes it worse. I will not tell you how many times I hear the stories that just what happened to me a few days ago, people start feeling sort of pain. A pain all, all of a sudden comes up in their life or they have an accident or they start getting ill. And most of the times it's not because they caught a cold because it's so cold. It's literally our bodies force us to pause so that we are not engaged in all the things that I just mentioned, all the agendas we have to fulfill, but we have to focus on our body and the replenishment and all the things that we would deny giving to ourselves had, not, had it not been for the pain that has you know, pushed you off your knees and now you have to lay down or that accident or that illness or something like that. Even despite that, many people would still take a bunch of painkillers or a bunch of medication and still go to work or still go and do that or still function. And I get it. We don't always have the best comfort to just drop everything and, you know, rest all the time. But it's just looking at things too much of a black and white because there is always, always something we can do. And... I really wanted to talk about this because a few days ago I started feeling back pain and what it happens usually it also corresponds in my life in with this period of having very vivid dreams having dreams about the descent having dreams about water and back is basically our part of the body the the area of our body that we repress all the feelings into is something we don't see. It's something that is in the back of us, so not front facing, but in the back of us, something that we repress all the feelings, all the ideas, all the things we would be challenged with when we give ourselves a chance to face those ideas, feelings, conflicts, questions, worries right what we do we dump in the back that's why so many people experience back pain it's not because it's so soft it's actually super strong it's super resilient it's a very strong part of our body but having worked with mind body uh, connection for many years i know that this is the part of the body the area of the body that is the most corresponding with a repressed rage, repressed feelings of rage, anger, and the resistance to having to function in this world. So basically what happens 
as we try to deny reality, as we try to pretend like we don't need rest, we just have to focus, we just have to brace up and keep going, actually, we don't. We have to listen to the first clues before the pain occurs that our body is needing to rest, that it needs to come down a little bit in, in the tempo, in the amount of things we are doing or committing to. And it also gives us all sorts of signals, like what I discussed just now. We might be more prone to having some dreams. We might be more prone to having some sort of premonitions during this time. Because the time of darkness, whether that's your personal darkness or the darkness that corresponds with the change of season, corresponds also with the element of water, which is not coincidentally in the lower of our spines, which is where all fluids are flowing. And basically what is asking literally for us to descend. So all these things are super connected. And for highly sensitive people, and especially for INFJ people who feel so much pressure to feel fulfill all the expectations, to fulfill all the roles, to be a perfect employee, to be a perfect mother, to be a perfect son or, you know, a friend, they don't want to fail others. They want to fail expectations. They don't want to say no. It's one of the hardest things that they could do, right? They notoriously give themselves away and sacrifice their resources. And this time of either a year or their life, if that happens at a different time of the year, but we have those personal times when we need to look at our darkness as well. And what highly sensitive people are doing with the INFJ, INFP that are so committed to others, that are so loyal, that need to make everyone feel good, that are always there to fulfill the needs of the other person, are always the ones that are most neglecting themselves. And like I just started saying, in the times that we most need to tend to ourselves, it will create the most drama and the most conflict that might actually bring up events or, like I said, some disease or pain or something that will literally demand of you to pay attention to your needs to what has to be looked at, to your hidden desires, to some disagreements that maybe you have in relating to other people, something that no longer works for you anymore, but you've been committing to this for way, way too long. And this time is a sort of gift to us that not only we are being reminded from the outside, like the winter time or the autumn time, that is the time to kind of wind down and withdraw a little bit, to kind of gaze inwards, but also all the feelings that you might actually be feeling. It's not just like your body needs a pumpkin spice latte, right? <laughs> Which is kind of the sign of the season. Your body needs most likely to rest, to feel cozy, to give yourself an extra time, an extra comfort, an extra mm, sort of cushioning, extra uh, space to process things that is possible for every person only if they choose to. So, like I started saying, the external world, the marketing world, wants to tell us that all we have to do to feel cozy is to get that pumpkin spice latte and we will be good to go <laughs> with the cup just running to that office with fluorescent light and we can function perfectly fine. 
it's not a replacement for rest. It's not a replacement for tending to your needs. It will never be a replacement for taking that time to nourish, to resource yourself. And for that reason, oftentimes we need boundaries. This is the time to exercise your ability to say no. This is a time where you practice your boundaries even more so. This is coincidentally the time when you are faced with your ability to say no which is the dark side that so many of highly sensitive people want to repress. Like, no, you're always nice. You always help everyone. This is a time also to face that you have to say no and you have the right to say no and you have the right to stand by your no. So this is when you might say no to that boss of yours, to the extra work. Maybe you say no to a lot of meetings with your friends probably you don't have that plenty of social commitments as a highly sensitive person and especially as a infj but maybe you do and maybe you can cut them down or maybe it's not about one or the other and cutting things ruthlessly maybe it's about cutting the intensity the level of commitment the way you do things so maybe it's not your typical typical 150 percent or 200 percent like you do things but maybe it's running on 70 percent and the world won't end if you do that so see where you can cut corners where you can commit less to where you can cut down cut out from from your life or you can do with less intensity less commitment whatever, you know, I hope you're getting the point by now. So maybe also this time is when you notice that some of these things you can take for a longer time, not just in the winter time, but you can see how I'm good at saying, you know, or I'm good at lessening my commitment to all those extra things. It's possible for me. And then on, it will benefit you beyond this season, beyond this time of maybe having low energy right now and you have to say no because otherwise you will like you know get by you will get sick or you just can't give so much because you're so fatigued right physically so i hope this is helpful if you want to know more about how to deal with overwhelm and how to become confident maybe saying those boundaries communicating those boundaries i really encourage you that you download my free resource it's like literally a 10 page pdf that not only talks about how to resolve stress and overwhelm in the moment but also how to prevent that overwhelm stress and also saying no and treating boundaries so it's accessible from the link in the description of this video. And I hope you really get to know a little bit about the mind-body connection that I share in this, because it will also give you a lot of insight how that importance of mind-body connection can benefit you as a highly sensitive person. Now, I hope that was helpful. I hope it gives you a little bit of validation about treating your emotions and your sensitivity and your sensations about everything that's communicating with care and respect this season. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And I will talk to you very soon.